Good morning, good hello, afternoon, hello. and good evening. Welcome to Web3 and Me, presented by Flolio. I am your host, Jeremy Weber, and I am joined, as always, by the man with the cleanest room in the Netherlands. There you go. Mr. Daniel Vondelok. Daniel, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, man. I am, I'm, doing, I'm doing great, man. Uh, not a great day for crypto. A lot <laughs> of blood in the streets. But you know what? Uh, when we see a lot of that, we tend to also see a lot of activity in NFTs. For those who are new to the world of NFTs, there seems to be a cycle of when crypto is up, NFTs are down. And when crypto is down, NFTs are up. And so we've seen a lot of big sales that we're going to recap over the last few days. We've seen a lot of big companies jump into the world yep. of Web3 and NFTs in some different ways that I think are really cool. Um, and so let's uh, let's jump into that. What uh, what have you been up to as far as NFTs go this week, Daniel? Anything interesting? Uh, I got whitelisted for the cool pets. Uh, cool pets drop. So they, those are like the companion drop from Cool Cats. Okay. I'm very very excited uh, for that. I tried to enter with like uh, an art submission, but I'm not much of an, of an artist, so I I didn't win. Okay. I, I didn't win there, unfortunately. But uh, yes, that would have been cool. It, it would have been cool. It would have been cool. I'm not, but yeah, I'm not much of an uh, not much of, a, of an artist. How about yourself? Anything in particular? Uh, I went for that whitelist. I sold a couple things. Um, but haven't done a whole lot of buying lately. I'm kind of just sitting around yeah, yeah. looking to see what's going on. Uh, there's been so many other things to keep up with that I've been uh, really just focusing on that. So let's yeah. get into our recap for the week. Now, we can't talk about Web3 and NFTs without talking about cryptocurrency. <laughs> and the big thing in crypto this week was the congressional hearing that happened on Wednesday. Uh, I spent most of yesterday watching the you know almost five hours of coverage on that. <laughs> and... I would say that my my tone leaving it was cautiously optimistic. Yeah. I think that there was a lot of you know curiosity and a desire to better understand crypto in the meetings. Uh, there were quite a few CEOs from big players in the crypto world that were called in front of Congress to you know answer questions, discuss how regulations would impact it. Uh, one yeah. of the big topics of conversation was stable coins. So for those who don't know what stable coins are. Uh, USDC, the US dollar coin, it is tied directly to the value of the US dollar. And that is one way that we've seen people are starting to move out of traditional savings accounts and move more money into USDC because on websites like crypto.com, you can stake your USDC and earn a significantly higher rate of return that way than a traditional savings account, you know. Savings accounts through a banks are getting you 0.05%, um, whereas sta staking USDC can get you into the 10 to 12% range. Uh, so obviously, that's a pretty good route to go. Yeah. Now, it wasn't all positive. Um, there was one part of the day, and we're going to show a clip here in a second, uh, where Congressman Brad Sherman from California really stole the show <laughs> and created a internet sensation uh, so real quick, let's just watch this. See if we can put it up. Let me quickly share my screen. Sorry about that. All right, there we go. And here we go. Yep. Ladies right. and gentlemen, Brad Sherman. Uh, does, uh, I don't think we have, uh, we don't have any audio, it seems like, on the ah. screen share. Uh, All right. uh, then I will stop screen share. I'm going to read the quote instead. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Save, we'll save some time there. Let's go ahead and read the quote. The number one threat to cryptocurrency is crypto. Bitcoin could be displaced by Ether, which could be displaced by Doge, which could be displaced by Hamster <laughs> Coin. And then there's Cobra Coin. And what could Mongoose Coin do to Crypto Coin? Um, I, I've never heard of Hamster Coin or Cobra yeah. Coin, but what I have heard of is there is now a Mongoose Coin created <laughs> from that viral interaction during the congressional hearings. So if you're looking for the next great meme coin, this is not financial advice, you can go on Uniswap and check out Mongoose Coin. So with that being said, let's move into uh, the next part of our recap, which Daniel is going to be a pretty 
big step forward as far as marketplaces goes, and that is the addition of Nifty Gateway, if you'd like to touch on that. Yeah, so Nifty Gateway announced that you can buy and sell Ethereum out of your wallet straight on uh, Nifty Gateway. That means that the fees you have to pay are significantly less, and they mentioned up to 75% less gas fees, uh, which, is, which is, of course, a significant uh, amount of reduction. And uh, also, of course, NFTs. So what that means is that on other platforms, you pay the full amount. So let's say if you're buying an NFT worth, I don't know, 0 0.01 Ethereum, you often have to pay 0 0.03 Ethereum in gas fees. So you'll, you'll quickly see that you have to pay like 300% in gas fees, which of course it's crazy. Um, and that's maybe even on a good day, on a bad day, you, you might even pay way more. Uh, so this, uh, this, this update will hopefully allow you to pay much, 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 much less gas. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Nifty Gateway has been primarily a Web2 site where you could buy yeah, a yeah, yeah. card, which is great for onboarding people, but it also limited the number of projects they had on there. So they're continuing to add to their site, which is fantastic. Um, so far, OpenSea has been the big player as far as Ethereum NFT goes. You know, yeah. going to be your NFTs like Bored Apes, Cool Cats, you know, most of the things that we see out right now. And to have a competitor to them is going to help, you know, push both sites forward. And in the coming, you know, weeks or possibly months, Coinbase is also going to be launching their NFT market. Oh, so yeah. That's going to be lot, crazy. That's going to be big. So a lot of really positive things happening there. Um, speaking of big, we had a few really big purchases in the world of NFTs that I'd like to touch on real quick. Uh, first one is going to be CryptoPunk number 4156. So I'm once again going to share my screen. I'm going to show this CryptoPunk uh, because this is, the lar I believe, the largest dollar sale we've seen uh, as far as CryptoPunks go. So this is CryptoPunk number 4156. It is a pixelated ape that is wearing a blue bandana. And that pixelated ape with the blue bandana sold yesterday for 2500 ethereum which uh you know based on today's prices maybe about 75 dollars but before that <laughs> it feels like uh, it right doesn't it, it feels like it but in actuality it's about 10 million dollars that Jeez. was spent on that crypto punk now something interesting with the crypto punks is this was a pretty well-known member of the crypto punk community a lot of uh, punks on Twitter made their handle their their main crypto. Yeah, punk yeah, yeah. And we've seen a little bit of, I guess you could say, dissension amongst the ranks as far as the intellectual property tied to crypto punks. Um, for those who don't know, Larva Labs is the creator of crypto punks. And years ago, when they first came out, they just gave them away for free. And so they didn't promise anything with it. There was no roadmap of we're going to do a game or some of these other things that projects are offering. All they said was, here are these punks. You can mint them, do with them what you will. Uh, they have a, a marketplace on the Larva Labs website, uh, which is the only place you can buy and sell the punks. And that keeps transaction fees down as well. You don't have to pay any yeah. fee. And Larva Labs makes no additional money off the punks. Um, and so some people in the community are upset that they don't have the IP rights to those punks. Um, I don't own any punks. I don't think I will ever because 75 plus Ethereum on a CryptoPunk is not something that a little is in my steep. ballpark right now. Little, little steep. A little steep. Um, however, they have grown quite popular. You know, we've seen people like Jay Z, um, Jason Derulo, a lot of famous people have made CryptoPunks their Twitter profile picture, which is great for the project, great for the brand, uh, and it's going to go down in history as one of the you know the big. PFP project that kind of kicked off this whole yeah. NFT cycle. So it's interesting to see what's going on there. And there have been a lot of sales in the last 24 hours after this. Uh, in addition to that, we also saw a piece by the artist X copy that is called right click save as guy. I'm going to show that again up here on my screen. Now, right click save as guy has become popular because we always have the uh, people in the comment section saying, Oh, I'm just going to right click save as. So this yeah, is thank right you. click save as guy. <laughs> yeah. um, we discussed on last week's episode why that does not work. 
and how the people who always say that or don't really know what they're talking about and it's pretty ridiculous but that is a picture of x copies right click save as guy now what's really cool about that is the account who bought it goes by the name cosimo de medici for those who don't know that account is actually owned by snoop dogg yes that's snoop dogg the same snoop dogg who has been in the hip-hop game for decades he is actually a very large collector of yeah. NFTs, and this was just discovered a few months back. Uh, that purchase went for sixteen hundred Ethereum. Uh, the original buyer of it paid ninety nine Ethereum ten months ago. So I would say that's a pretty nice return on investment for uh, for a one year hold. So very cool to see you know some of these big purchases that have been going on this week, and. We'll continue that theme, Daniel, and let's get into a recap of what happened with Pond's oh, yeah. merge uh, sale from last week that we discussed. Yeah, so we discussed the uh, box merge that was coming up, and so stuff went down. Some 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 stuff went down. So to note, um, box merge sold for a total of ninety two million dollars. I believe maybe around two hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, assets were bought, 250,000 mass, um, split over roughly 25,000 users. Uh, but there was an issue. There were some issues with the drop. So I'll share my screen real quick, uh, just so I can better show what the issue is. Let us see. All right. So you should see a page made by a user right. that's that's called Shorts Howard. He is he is a user that, user that's been active in the Puck uh, Puck universe for a very long time. I think he is the top holder of Puck's uh, coin called Ash. Um, and he usually posts like an update on his newsletter where he like talks talks about Puck or like what happened. So he posted a quick a quick uh, Q and A on the on the bug that happened. Um, so this is a little bit complicated, and I I, I can't really wrap my wrap my head around it all all too well. But basically, person A withdraws to wallet A, person B withdraws to wallet A, and they merge. Okay, so if you buy an a a mass asset, and you already hold one mass asset, they fuse together and becomes like the mass you have plus the mass you bought. Basically, very simply put. Okay. But if the person A sells the token in wallet A to wallet C, so th at this point, wallet A no longer has any mass, right? Because they sold it. Um, but if person B with, with, uh, withdraws to wallet A again, that's where the bug happens. Because um, wallet A has no token, right? So okay. it shouldn't be able to, to, um, to merge. There's nothing to merge with. But it merges with wallet C. And that's not supposed to happen. Um, so uh, Puck elaborated a little bit on how many tokens were affected. So, and he he said there were only 10, 10 bugged merges in general. So it's not too bad. The damage is uh, definitely controlled. But Puck being the perfectionist as he is, he said it must be zero. So what is uh, going to happen? is there's going to be a new mint on a new contract and that's going to cost uh, Nifty Gateway millions. It is expensive because okay. gas is still a thing and they're going to have to pay maybe um, like millions and millions of uh, of gas. So is it going to be a new issue. mint of all the transactions? Yeah, yeah. So okay. Do we ever I get believe... a number of how many total transactions it was? Uh... I know you said 25,000 buyers, but I know some people may have bought some of them, came back and bought more. Yeah, so it's, it's roughly, a, <clears throat> roughly, about, roughly a quarter million. So imagine okay. minting a quarter million tokens. That's expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're going to have to <laughs> redo that. Um, so they, so Puck said you will get what you acquired. Um, so it's going to be reminted based off of what you have, basically. So if you sold, you sold. Um, I'm not a thousand percent sure on how it works with flippers. Um, I guess they just get what they. I just. I think I, they just get the money and they. They. They don't get like the remint because they sold it. 
Uh, I know there were some concerns about that in the Discord. Um, so yeah, that's my quick update on on the on the merch drop. I bought some myself. I forgot to mention that in the in the intro. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I've been up to. Just bought merch. Uh, the secondary market was up for maybe an hour, and I was just watching. With I was like having a good time because the like the the whole tokenomics thing and the going on in the market is crazy. Because um, I, I'll, I'll keep this very short. Okay, I don't want to go on like a tangent about 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 mass, okay. but simply put. You can have, there were 50 rare masses. They're, they're, they're blue instead of black. If you have one mass, a single unit of mass, and it's blue, someone could give you two normal mass, and your rare mass will become normal. Because it, the normal mass basically eats the rare mass. Huh. So what people do, if they have maybe like a rare mass that's, that's maybe like 10 mass, they buy a bunch on secondary just to boost their mass up so it cannot be eaten by someone else basically or like they do have to gift it right but if you have one mass and it's rare and you and someone else is also a rare holder they'll try to like destroy your rare mass so their so their mass becomes more valuable so there's a bit of game theory in this as yes. well yes yep that, yep definitely okay is. that's pretty cool i think it's very fun and it's all on chain so that's great we've seen a little bit of stagnation in NFTs with a lot of the profile pictures. Yeah. Um, it seems very oversaturated, but something like that that creates a different element, I think is really cool. I think Definitely. It's very, very cool. So moving on from that, I uh, want to touch on one more thing in our recap before we move into our main segment of the day. And that is a drop that happened with the brand Hundreds. For those who don't know, the Hundreds is a streetwear brand. They've been around for almost two decades now. And Bobby Hundreds, one of the founders of it, has been very active in the world of NFTs and Web3. And just the other day, they had a apparel drop that was a Hundreds and Harry Potter collaboration. Now, crazy matchup, right? Crazy. Very crazy matchup. I'm a Harry Potter guy. I think that's awesome. Uh, what was really cool about this was the Hundreds dropped an NFT a few months back called Atom Bomb Squad. Yep. Atom Bomb is their main logo. And in order to access this drop early, you had to have an Atom Bomb Squad NFT in your MetaMask, which you could then link to their Web3 enabled site. And that provided early access to this apparel drop. They did something similar with the Board API Club. I'm wearing that shirt right now, a few months back, where the public could buy a blue shirt and Board Ape uh, holders could access a different website, linking their wallet and buy a different shirt. Uh, may seem like semantics, not big of a deal, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this moving forward. Uh, apparel companies offering special access to their NFT holders. There have been rumblings of big designer brands getting more involved with collaborations. And I think we're just getting started with that. And I would not be surprised if we saw luxury brands like Gucci or Balenciaga getting more involved in this and owning these NFTs early on. That's what some of the best alpha I can give you is if you see a designer or an apparel company that you like releasing an NFT, just buy it because you will be able to make some money off of that. Not financial yeah. advice, but <laughs> that's what I, that's what I would do. And that's what I'm going to do. So keep an eye out for any of those apparel NFT drops. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, real quick. I think I might be mistaken, but I believe Versace did like uh uh, NFT collection with with Christie's, like this auction house. Really, I could okay. be wrong. I could be wrong. It, it's 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 a brand similar to Versace, or it is Versace. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to throw that out real quick. But that's in the past. Yeah, there's. Uh, we can we'll go into that on another episode because I have a lot of thoughts yeah. on that. But we'll uh, we'll keep we'll end it there today. So moving into our main segment today is a discussion on gaming. So Daniel, I would like to ask you. Are NFTs the future of gaming? Uh, so I'll, I'll keep it very, uh, very simple. Uh, that's a yes. A yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I would, I would agree with you on that. Uh, Thank you. The global gaming market. Would you like to guess how much uh, the global gaming market was worth last year without looking at our notes? Don't, don't cheat. Okay. Uh, is it a hundred and no? Just kidding. Uh, I don't know. Numbers are weird. I, I saw this Numbers one video without, without like going off track too much it was like what is one billion like one billion like dollars compared to 
like one dollar, right? Mm -hmm. And you see this whole stack of I don't know. I think it was like sand. What is what? What are they called? Sand grains or like 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 a grain of sand compared yeah. to a billion uh, grains of sand. And the difference is just it. You can you can you can barely understand the difference between one and one billion. Um, but yeah, I don't know. A lot. So, a, a lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, it's one hundred and seventy three point seven billion dollars was the gaming industry in twenty twenty. It's expected to reach three hundred and fourteen billion dollars in 2026. Uh, so a lot of potential growth there. Now, a few really cool things happened this week in the gaming industry that made us just want to discuss this today. The first was a deal between FaZe Clan, which is a very well-known yeah. uh, esports team, and the company MoonPay. MoonPay has recently gotten very involved in the NFT space as a payment provider. They have been responsible for onboarding celebrities such as DJ Khaled, Post Malone, helping them acquire Bored Apes, and they have a deal with FaZe Clan. Part of why that's a big deal is they see a lot of people. FaZe Clan has 5.6 million Twitter followers, 11.5 million Instagram followers, and tens of millions of Twitch followers spread across the individual channels of the member of that. So I think there are a lot of implications for bringing on Twitch streamers and other esports celebrities. Uh, one thing that I think is really cool is what's called a POAP. So, for those who don't know, POAP stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol. Essentially, it is an NFT that is dropped to people if they are in attendance for an event of some kind. During NFT NYC back at the beginning of November, all sorts of different uh, POAPs were given out to people who were attending certain events. Some things you can do with those. NFTs, they're they're redeemable. You know, some of these people could say that if you were watching a certain stream and you received this PO app, you're going to be airdropped. You know, access to something could be apparel, could be some sort of in-game prize someday. But there's a lot, a lot of opportunity there. Um, Daniel, any thoughts on that Phase Clan deal? Um, yes, yeah, like it's pretty crazy to see because, like, I remember, I don't know, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, maybe. I was watching this Call of Duty videos on YouTube, and it was always either Optic Gaming or Face or like Face Clan, and like it's really cool to see them enter the whole uh, NFT scene. And yeah, I think the deal is definitely, definitely. I think we're gonna see more, more, more of these companies lining up with um, with with MoonPay or similar similar companies. And yeah, I'm looking forward. And then on the actual gaming front, we saw an announcement from. Ubisoft that they yeah. were releasing their first NFT for the game Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Um, it was a very interesting few days for this. Oh yeah, drop. it really was. Initially, it was very poorly received. Um, there are they put out a video on YouTube that received twenty two thousand dislikes, which is not great, and they promptly removed that video from the channel. Which oh, I think they did. A little, that's a mistake. I think that was uh, not the best way to take it on their part. Yeah. However, the NFT drop that happened yesterday, it still sold out within an hour or two. So despite some of the people objecting to it, there is still a lot of desire from gamers around NFTs. One thing that I thought was really cool about this drop was that it was free. So they are not charging for this initial NFT drop. And they're doing three different ones that are for in-game NFTs that will be used for Ghost Recon. And even better about that is you can only access that drop based on how much you play the game. So for yesterday's drop, it was for a tactical rifle that can be used in Ghost Recon. You had to have a certain experience level to access the drop. The next one is for a helmet that is going to be worn in the game, and you have to have played at least 600 hours of the game to access that one and then finally there's another apparel for pan, a pair of you know enhanced pants in the game that you need 100 hours of play time so not only were they free but they were making sure that they were going to people who actually play the game and not someone who just wants to flip it now yeah. with these items they're also going to be available to buy and sell on rarible and a website called object so if you got these you can use them you can turn around and sell them and I think there's a lot of growth potential there for other games to capitalize on that. 
Yeah, and it was uh, they were using Tezos, right? So the gas fees yes. are not weren't even that high. Yes. You love it. One of the, one of the big objections you hear from gamers on this one was the environmental impact yeah. that NFTs have. Now, Tezos is a proof of stake blockchain, which means there's less energy required to transact on that blockchain. So that argument is pretty flimsy at best. Uh, additionally, I would say if you are playing a ton of video games, you're probably using more electricity playing those games and uh, tweeting your dislike of it than you actually are submitting that transaction. So that's a, that's a pretty poor argument. And despite all the people who were being loud about it, it still was a successful drop. And this is just the beginning for these. Another thing that's cool about what they're doing is that it's on the blockchain. So therefore there's a digital ledger in the future. It's possible that you could see who owned these NFTs and ones that are dropped in future games, you know, something like Fortnite, Call of Duty, Halo, if they have their NFTs eventually, you'll be able to see who owned it previously. And that could create a really high demand for some of these streamers and other high profile esports players to sell their weapons, uh, yeah. sell some of the NFTs. And I think there's also going to be potential for, you know, things like maybe merging weapons or creating your own NFT maps for some of these games. There's uh, really, if you can imagine it for NFTs and how it's going to interact with gaming, it's possible to, for it to happen. Yeah, you can you, you can do it. You can do everything you want with it. Basically, it's really really depending on the developers how far they're willing to go. And speak about developers and willing and like how far they're willing to go. Uh, I'm willing to bet that Fortnite is going to have their NFTs next year. I, I like I'm sure of it. Again, yeah. like I, well, I I can't even say not not financial advice because there's like there's nothing tangible yet, of course. But I'm I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Yeah, I'm not a Fortnite player myself. I don't like getting you know beat up on by fifty yeah, year old me kids neither. and them laughing at me. Uh, yep. But if they have a Halo NFT, I'm definitely in on that. Ooh, so, that'd be cool. Moving on, uh, we'll continue the discussion around gaming, and this is going to be about decentralization of some of these games. Uh, we discussed last week that the Board Ape Yacht Club was releasing a competition for their members to play. It was going to be the Board Ape Yacht Club versus the Mutant Ape Yacht Club. The festivities were set to kick off for a week beginning last Sunday. However, hours before, Apple decided that they were no longer going to allow the game to be released through their store. So I guess my question, Daniel, for you is, are decentralized apps for games of NFTs even possible? Um, I would assume so, right? Yeah. I think I think the hard part is that they almost have like an entire monopoly on the market, like Play Store or like the I don't, I don't even know what what, what is the, what is the Apple App Store, Apple App Store? <laughs> what is it yeah, called? So Do you know? A, yeah, the App Store, and then there's also for Android. You know, you have like the Google Play Store, things like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I guess my concern comes into how big can these games get without some level of decentralization, and Apple. Yeah. Is definitely a company that would like to profit off of this game as much as they can like with every app that they allow in their store yeah so i think it's going to be an interesting dynamic to see how this all plays out and the precedent that sets for future nft games um because as we move on we're going to discuss a really big nft game called axie infinity so axie infinity is the highest selling nft in the world higher than crypto punks board apes the all-time sales for this game have reached 3.6 billion dollars now axie infinity is a play to earn game they compare it sort of to pokemon where you create a team that has three axes these cute little characters and you can battle you can build you can hunt for treasure all of these things they also have a token with the abbreviation axs and that is tradable on coinbase as of this morning, the value for one token of AXS was $105. One thing that we've seen with Axie Infinity that I think is really, really cool is the ability for people in countries to make a living playing yeah. this game. That's crazy. The largest markets are the Philippines and Venezuela, making up about 50% of all Axie Infinity players. And we've spoken to a few um, owners of Axies who have what are called scholars that work underneath them. So it's not a pyramid scheme. Okay? Yeah, I was about to say, it's not a pyramid scheme, guys, trust me. <laughs> so as you stack these people up, no, uh, it's not a pyramid scheme. 
what you can do is go on. You can buy a team of axes, and you can recruit a scholar. You can provide them with the axes to play the game, and then there is some form of split amongst the tokens that are earned for it. Daniel, what all do you know about Axie that you'd like to share? Yeah, so what I know is that it's having the scholarship system is not an official uh, implemented feature on the website itself, but they did they they did say they were thinking about developing a way for it to be streamlined and like supported through uh, the actual game because no one expected that this whole scholar system would take off and change change people's lives, but it turns out it did. And because of the wonders of the blockchain, it's entirely possible f for like you to have just people under you working for you, doing dailies like like um, play now and then, and just earn a living. Like it's absolutely crazy. I love yeah, it. It's uh, the potential for this is is huge, and as we've discussed, NFT gaming is the future, plain and simple. Uh, you can try to deny it, I guess, if you want, but it is like Thanos. It is inevitable. Yeah. So let's move on from our discussion of NFT gaming and let's look ahead at what is coming up. Uh, would you like to touch on the Pepsi mic drop NFT? Uh, yeah, I would. So let me change, wait, not change, share my screen because that happened. Let's see, an hour and a half ago, this what the, the wait list. So Pepsi announced that they were going to have their Genesis NFT collection. And if you don't know, uh, Genesis basically means uh, their first, their first uh, NFT collection. Um, how it went down, one, uh, an hour and 30 minutes ago, you had to press connect your wallet and you could sign up for the, for the wait list. So I was there, I was, I was ready. I, I clicked the button and nothing worked. So I guess the entire planet at the same time tried clicking the button. Uh, so my, my odds were looking very, very bleak. Uh, so I have some lined up here, so I'll move on to the to the next one. So this is Croaks, and Croaks is a derivative project for, uh, based off of uh, crypto. Sorry, I'll check my notes. What is it called? Do you remember the name? It's slipping my mind. I do not. Oh, crypto. crypto it's crypto. Oh. There you go. I had to check real quick. I had to check real quick. Um, so they, they, they arrived like maybe a month ago, maybe a month and a half, month and a half ago. And they suddenly, they, they, they really took the NFT world by storm. Um, so what they are, are basically a derivative of them, except they have like this really, really cool, like rendering. This almost, almost lo looks like a plushy, like you can see all the fur. Okay. That's maybe a little bit, <laughs> maybe a little bit much for the, for the stream to handle. Um, <laughs> Like this, like film noir, like that's really cool. Yeah, I think I, I like. I just really love like the rendering. I was like a little video. Do you have audio on this as well? I do not. So the cryptodes were created by the artist Gremlin. Uh, they are cri uh, pixelated toads, and they also had an airdrop that came with them as well. So they've added a few other things. But Gremlin, the the creator, is a pretty well respected artist. So go if you go back. So go back to there, Daniel. That was a uh, this one. That was a crypto. One more. This one. That was a dedication to actually. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you're circle. right. Yeah, I guess with a you know with a mask on. So very, very interesting that they're. Uh, yeah, you can see it up in the corner there. Yeah. They have. Uh, they tagged a minute, but yeah, okay. That's those are pretty fun looking. I think there's a lot to be said for when making selections. If something is cute and has potential mass appeal and you find that it's enjoyable, you know, it's worth taking a look at it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I had the website open right here. Um, what the meat space is, is something I do not know. So if you're, if you're, if you're inter interested in, in looking, uh, looking up what the meat space is, I think you should do that at, at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to risk Googling that. Yeah. Um, we don't, we don't want to get kicked off the air for that one. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there you go. Croaks are pos are positioned perfectly for adoption within meat space, the physical, tangible world. Ah, the meat space. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Um, we will seek There's out reputable studios that specialize in quality vinyl models and toys with the dream that a tangible croaks may soon chill next to you on your desk. I love it. So they're definitely looking to get into the real world, into the meat, uh, meat space. I keep saying it. Me the metaverse now. 
the meat space. And the meat space. And the meat space. So yeah, art's dope. I like the roadmap. Good luck minting. It's going to be very, very busy. That's all I know. So moving on to the next project, we have, again, uh, my pet hooligan. I want to touch them real quick because I believe we did a project highlight on them uh, last week. Last week. And they just announced their minting time. So pre-sale the 13th of December at 4 p.m. UTC. Uh, only people with a mint pass are allowed to mint. I I can mint one, thankfully. If I was earlier, I could, I could have minted three, but you know, shame on me, shame on me. I should have put in more time and more effort. That's all right. That one is better than nothing. That's that's a fact. That's a fact. And the public mint will be on the 14th of December at 4 p.m. UTC. And the mint price will be 0 0.08, so a very respectable price. Not uh, touching anything with 0 .0 0 0.25 um, mint price. So I just wanted to share the uh, trailer real quick. Let's see, okay. does this show up well, or is this, or does this look weird? It's showing up. We're All seeing. Right. Uh, we're about to see the little pet hooligan. There we go. Yeah, I think the visuals on this are so cool. They did such a great job with the yeah. 3D rendering, with creating this world. These and it's are to a earn. fun project. So this will be my very first um, play to earn project. I've really, I've really dedicated a lot of time to. So Awesome. Make sure you're still blocking out this time in your schedule every week for this show when you get addicted to this game, okay? Oh, uh, well, I, I, I can't promise anything. I can't promise <laughs> anything. So yeah, I still love what they're doing. I still like how they interact with um, with other creators on Twitter, for example. What I showed, let's see if I can, like stuff like this, like they reach out to creators and they go like, oh, you look weird with your hair and stuff. <laughs> they kind of like taunt them a bit and uh, get some really good engagement. So that's really neat. So I think right. uh, that should be it for the projects we want to highlight or about well, the look ahead, I mean, sorry, not the highlight. Um, so because this is coming up in the next three days. Spotlight now. Okay. Yeah, now we are moving on to our project spotlight. Uh, would you go ahead? Yes. So we are each going to discuss three projects that are under 0.25 Ethereum. Yeah. I will once again say this is not financial advice. <laughs> yes. All three of my projects are ones that I personally own. And so I want to spotlight them because I believe in them. I believe that they're going to be, you know, do a lot of great things long term. The first one is Tools of Rock. Now, this is a music-focused NFT. There are multiple components to it as well. The Genesis NFT are the actual Tools of Rock. Uh, three of those produced a VIP pass, which then allowed you to get their Gods of Rock, which is their profile picture project. Now, one thing I love about them is, number one, is a very strong team behind it. They're well-known in the space. They're well-respected. They're not anonymous, and they've continued to slowly build this project up. As a music lover myself, I love going to concerts. They're also building a concert venue for the metaverse. Now, don't get me wrong. I love going to in-person concerts uh, with my friends, having a few PBRs, maybe dancing around like an idiot. That's kind of my <laughs> MO when I go to concerts. But the opportunity for concerts in the metaverse is really huge and we saw this last year with some of the COVID lockdowns where bands were hosting virtual shows yeah, yeah. and it was really fun it was something different that we could do at home without actually having to to go out and i think that there is a lot of opportunity to see metaverse shows i would not be surprised going back to snoop dogg if he started having some shows in the metaverse yeah it is definitely going to happen so that is one of the reasons I am very high on Tools of Rock. So you would you happen to know, sorry, real quick, do you happen to know yeah. if they're, if they, are they are they creating their own metaverse or are they, are they putting their concert into the central land or the sandbox? They're, they're not creating their own metaverse. They're creating a concert venue for the metaverse. So it is a, a building that will have multiple stories and yeah. your avatar in the metaverse can walk through the concert venue, check out different bands, um, and each of the three different parts of the project, the Genesis NFT, the VIP, VIP Pass, and the Gods of Rock are all under 0.25 Ethereum. Okay. If I were to recommend someone you know, who wanted to get started, I would say grab the VIP Pass first. It's going for around 0.18 Ethereum. You can 
there's going to be a lot of future drops that will get early access for the holders of the VIP pass. Then I would probably grab the Genesis NFT, you know, being the first one. It's really cool. Uh, it has a basically like a frame with a guitar pick, a record, and they have different elements to it. You know, the year it was based, who it was based on. And then finally, the Gods of Rock, that's going to be your cheapest price point. So if you're just dabbling in the NFT space, you have a couple hundred bucks that you want to throw in. You can grab a Gods of Rock NFT and having three of those, you can then burn them on the Gods of Rock website and create a demigod of rock. So there are some different elements to this that I, I think are really cool and they are just getting started. And I strongly believe that this team is going to continue to deliver and is a good starting point for someone who is getting into NFTs. What's your uh, first project, Daniel? Uh, so my first project I wanted to highlight that is under 0.25 ETH um, is the Top Dog Beach Club. So I'll share my screen real quick just so I can uh, have some visual stimuli. Let's see. Or stimulus. I don't know. I can't speak English. Let me have a look. So they started minting, I believe, four months ago, maybe five months ago. So they're definitely like a project that's been around in the space for uh, for quite some time. Um, the one thing that kind of took away from their shine is that they started minting maybe a day before uh, the the Doge Pound, and that like their project kind of took off. So Doge Pound had to, like the they, the the Doge Pound took some time, but eventually they started like really doing stuff well. And then, then the Top Dog Beach Club kind of kind of set behind being like a similar project in terms of like subjects or like a dog. Um, so they kind of got their spotlight taken from them. Um, what is really cool from them is the team is uh, not anonymous. So the team is fully, uh, fully out there, fully, you know, there you go. That's Paul and Abby. So I've spoken with them plenty of times. They're both wonderful people. Um, and they stopped their, their normal jobs and they moved into working on this project full time uh, quite some time ago. So the I believe the floor is at like 0.12 or something. And you can see a lot of large uh, large influence influencers on, on Twitter picking up well, like a dog here and there. So it's definitely a project to look out for. Okay. So my second oh, project. Oh, was, I just want to show real quick. I almost forgot. This is how they look like. Just so you have some some idea. So they look great. All right, go ahead, go ahead. All right, no worries. So my second project is Bubblegum Kids. The Bubblegum Kids are a fairly new project. They've been out for a few months. Once again, they have a very strong team behind them, which is always a positive for me, an active development team that has been around NFTs for a while. Uh, they're also really cute. So I'm going to pull one up real quick. I'll keep talking while I do it, but they are a very cute NFT. They are, you know, an easy entry point for people because you look at them and they're pretty fun. And there's also something really cool, which is going to be a companion airdrop. So a lot of these projects will offer airdrops. And this one is going to be puppies. Now, everyone loves puppies for the most part. And I do. This is going to. Okay, good. So <laughs> this is what a bubblegum kid looks like. So they have different types, different times of bubblegum, eyes, stuff on their head, clothes, all sorts of different things. And the puppies are even cuter. So what they'll be doing in the coming weeks is allowing for every bubblegum kid you own, you can mint one puppy. And so I think that's a really fun entry point as well. It's about 0.15 Ethereum right now. So essentially, you'll get two NFTs for the price of one once these bubble gum puppies come out. So that's my second one for today. Yeah, Daniel, what's so your second I'll NFT project? I'll show my second one. And it's funny enough, it is basically exactly 0.25. Um, so this is Quarter Machine. This is made by uh, Space Station Animation. Uh, and they are part of the larger company that is called Space Station. And if you're into gaming, you know Space Station Gaming. They're absolutely, uh, absolutely huge. And basically what the project is about is the Space Station owner has a daughter. 
and they made and they're making this animation together so um this character you see right here is voiced by uh his daughter is called Atli. uh the i don't think the audio works if i i don't know does that work very a little bit okay a little bit a little bit is good enough so basically the market for the market for uh these animations for for really young kids is has always been insanely big think about uh baby shark and has like what like maybe like five billion views on youtube or something like some absolutely crazy numbers they're pulling so what quarter machine is doing is you can mint uh, out of these capsules you see right there you can get assets from the animation and if your and if your asset is featured in this in the in the show or like in their in their app on their phone, um, you gain like a like a type of like uh, IP reward for it. Uh, they mentioned they were going to hand out a quarter million dollars in IP rewards before the end of this year. So we definitely talk about a, like a large amount of money that's being distributed to holders. And the thing is, they haven't really had like a crazy like a crazy social media boost. The only thing that that's happened so far is Gary V picked up four and hasn't even talked about it. So um, that is some under the radar alpha I can share with you guys. Okay. So you know, like the the, the animation people are absolutely talented. There's like a team of animators, like maybe like twenty animators working around the clock on this project. So it's definitely like a large, large project. Um, so they kept their. They kept their mint to a thousand. It used to be uh, more than that, and I, I I don't remember exactly how much the the mint count was, but they kept it to a thousand. Right now it's maybe eight hundred minted, so about two hundred left to go. And mints point two five. It's expensive. It's a costly mint, but I I definitely believe that if you're investing or like you know like buying an NFT from a from a from a company, and it's a like an established company like Space Station, it's definitely worth the money. Okay, very cool. My final project that we're going to touch on today under 0.25 is Gen X by House of Kiva. So I will pull that up real quick. House of Kiva has been around for quite a few months now. Yeah. And honestly, one of my biggest regrets in NFTs was being on the website for House of Kiva when they were releasing their Genesis memberships. So this is what yeah. one of the Gen X's looks like. Uh, they are very futuristic. They have a lot of different attributes to them. And there's going to be a lot of utility for it as well. So House of Kiva created a Genesis membership that provides airdrops. It was originally priced for $500 because they were selling it in US. Now the Genesis membership goes for about 1.7 Ethereum. Um. So. A, uh, I remember being on their website and deciding, I'm not going to mint this. Yeah, me too, and, me too. <laughs> uh, talk about a regret right there. But we still move forward. So the House of Kiba Gen X is going to be involved in a game. They're also doing an animated show with them. Now, when projects offer stuff like that, I'm usually skeptical. However, House yeah. of Kiba has partnered with a lot of other big PFP projects, a lot of big, other big NFTs like the Gutter Cat Gang and Board Apes. And they have consistently delivered very high quality products. So I am going to take a leap of faith that they are going to deliver on this. Also, it is currently only 0 0.06 Ethereum to buy a house of Kiba Gen X. So it's another one of those lower entry points that allows you access to a project that has added value, has some higher entries, and what I believe will continue to add value as we go along. Daniel, what is your third and final project under 0.25 Ethereum? So my final and last project under 0.25 is Sappy Seals. So I may have lied, okay? I, I, I lied a little bit. It's 0.28, okay? What are you, what, what are you gonna do, sue me? Uh, it, it's, it, <laughs> it's it's point, 0.03 above what we actually discussed, but I, uh, I'll just go ahead and say, oh yeah, they were under 0.25 when when we when we made our schedule. But I, I totally I, fine. It, it was even higher than than it was. Uh, You're just so that good at picking out good projects. I'm just crazy. What can I say? 
no, uh, no, no financial advice, uh, I promise. Um, so my final project I wanted to highlight was Sappy Seals, uh, mainly being due that they have a very, very, very clear roadmap uh, going into the second quarter of 2022. So I there's a lot of information to take in, so I, I, I highly advise you to, to, to check it out on your own time. Uh, a lot of really interesting roadmap decisions, very like not not normal roadmap like oh so we're going to give uh 20 airdrops to holders at you know so definitely uh some some new stuff they're introducing to the table and what i also like about them is they're being very very goofy on social media uh, not just them themselves but also community members are very 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 goofy so what i really like is that they're not like oh we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. <laughs> like if, <laughs> like the owner of the project is just retweeting something about someone putting hot sauce in the ice because of the market. You know, like, <laughs> like you love to see it. So um, other than that, they got you know great art. It's very, very, very cute seals. They had some really cool one out of ones. Some more of their roadmap stuff. And yeah, so I wonder how they, how how they how, how they'll do. But um, that's the one I would recommend as well. I think that's something that we should touch on too is the importance of community yeah. in NFT projects. You know, we've seen it with the meme coins before this, like Doge and Shiba Inu. The community behind a project is really important. And one area that I think people don't understand is how valuable it can be to have a group of people that you can relate to with some of these projects. I know a few people who missed out on, you know, opportunities for bored apes because they couldn't wrap their head around the community behind it and why does that add anything and i i really have discovered over the years that that form of community is what people really want and need and yeah it really had a light shined on it during covid of how important it is to interact Definitely. with others and to find people who are going to be there and support you and the nft community is maybe the most supportive community i've been around yeah. in my entire life 100 uh, percent I remember I've been on Twitter for a long time and had a lot of very bad engagements on Twitter. It used to be a very negative place for me. And then I found NFTs and it's just full of very, very positive people. So that's one of the many reasons I'm bullish on NFTs on Web3. And I think that they're, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg and more and more people are going to get involved, whether it's through cute projects like Sappy Seals or through some of the innovations in gaming and streetwear and music there's just there's a lot of up still left to go so if you're new to yeah. this and you feel like you may have missed out because you weren't here from day one the fact that you're watching this show and hearing about nfts means you're still very early so Definitely. You know, jump in get involved check out some of the cheaper price point projects that daniel and i just touched on if you're looking for an entry point that doesn't seem too intimidating yeah and i would just like to touch on the the whole community aspect I got my girlfriend introduced to NFTs maybe like a couple of weeks ago. I've been talking about it uh, to her for like the last half year. But like, come on, you gotta, come on. No, it's it's, it's not bad for, for the nature, I promise. You need to take a look, you know. So uh, she finally budged and, you know, got, got engaged. And she's um, an artist herself. So she's always actively oh, drawing and animating. And so she won a Cool Pets uh, whitelist spot as well for winning like an art contest so that's really really cool and she she told me like like i'm just amazed like how supportive the twitter is because she posted like an animation had like 200 likes or something she was like that's crazy you know so at yeah. a, on her main because she has like two two twitter accounts one is like her normal art account and one's like her nft art account because there's still some tension between the two worlds where the traditional artists and the nft artists are like you know false information spreading around the whole the whole shebang i have a hard uh, time understanding that because there is nft art is so beneficial for artists yeah um yeah. i hope that more of them come around to it because there's just such a great opportunity for artists in the nft space yeah time time will tell so i think as like if we go into 20 if we're going into 2022 I think we'll see a lot of like traditional artists make the switch to NFT. 
uh, or like maybe like a mixture of both, you know, like it doesn't have to be necessarily like one side of the coin, like, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to add that real quick, that she's very, very happy with how Twitter is doing, like how people are interacting with each other. So yeah, love to see yeah. it. My wife has, uh, she got in on the NFTs with me. She's helped me pick out a board ape. We have, uh, I made her a pair of vans that had that ape on it. Oh, she cool. Will, she will steal my board ape hoodie at the drop of a hat because it's so comfortable and, and wear that. So it's, uh, it's been really fun to see this community grow over this last year. I'm excited to see what 2022 has in store. Oh, it's going to be crazy. I think definitely, definitely yeah. looking back at last year. Uh, I wonder how, I wonder how, how it'll go. Yep. So Only usually around this part, we go into questions and answers. Um, but we understand that with the current audience that we have, it might be a little bit difficult to uh, get a lot of questions to ask or answers for you. Um, so if you do have, an, uh, have a question, feel free to ask it in the chat and we'll answer it on stream. Uh, otherwise, JWeb, do you have a question for me? Or do I have a question for you? Uh, I don't have any questions for you at the moment, Daniel. None? None. No questions? Uh, you don't want to know covered, anything about me? We've covered a lot today. We have, we have, we have. What's your, uh, what's your deadlift record? Uh, <laughs> 450 pounds. Okay, there you go. That's, that's my, qu that's my, uh, my question for today. Mine's none, because I should really get into working out. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Uh, any Flowly up updates you'd like to share today? So there's nothing too tangible we can share right now. The one thing we can share is that uh, the team is always working behind the scenes, making Flido better, 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 better. Uh, and, you know, the second iteration of the website is coming, on, coming along very nicely. So no real date to give on that yet, but uh, definitely looking forward. It's going to be really cool. Nice. I've been using the site for some uh, top shot buying and selling decisions. Um, yeah. Just checking our data and using the asset analyzer to kind of do some side-by-side -side comparisons. So as we continue to add more projects to the site, I'm very excited to utilize it even more and more. So big things coming for NFTs and big things coming for Flolio over the next couple of months. So with that being said, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, thank you. This has become an hour of the week that I really look forward to because I mean, if you, I hope you can tell, I love talking about NFTs and web three. And uh, it's been a lot of fun getting this going, and we are just getting started. So, for oh, yeah. Daniel Vondelock, for the team at Flolio, thank you for tuning in to Web3 and me. Thank you. We will see you next week. Goodbye, Bye -bye, everybody.